And actually these two holes are hidden below the battery strap here. So in retrospect, I guess I would wait to put these on until I put on the flight controller. Okay, so the Pavo 25 is built, it's tuned, and I've flown it, and it's a lot of fun. And it's actually pretty stable, so I was just cutting through some small trees and flying through the branches. So there's a couple things that I didn't record that I changed on this that I wanna talk about now before you watch the rest of the build log. So in the video that I followed with Troncat, right, he mounts the heat sink on top of the air unit on the USB-C side. Um, I put that on the bottom so that I could have USB access. Also in the video, right, the um, flight controller is kind of like on a diagonal of the corner is the front or it looks like a diamond, right? Um, in the video, he and I as well mounted the air unit on top with a 90 degree turn. So it's kind of like a diamond and a square at the same time. I have now reoriented everything. So it's like a diamond on top of a diamond. And that makes it easier to get into here. And with the USB on the bottom, right, you will have access through this little side here to uh, actually plug into the air unit. So you don't need to pull everything apart. Now they do provide you with this little like special built beta FPV USB micro adapter to go around the corner because you can't actually get access uh, to the USB port and you have to slide it underneath here and wiggle it out. This thing is already coming loose. So I think I'm gonna try and like epoxy it or something so it never comes apart because it goes in there pretty secure. And I doubt that once this breaks that I'll be able to find another one on AliExpress because it looks like it's an extra long uh, piece versus some of the other ones. So just some food for thought there. Um, if there's a better way, I have no idea in their pictures on their website how they built a drone with a micro USB port back here. Maybe they did something creative, I don't know, and I need to figure that out. But just keep that in mind. If you're gonna build this, I did make some different changes. Um, and then the antenna, I ended up using the shorter antenna and then I ran the wires through the stack into the back and it actually fits in this little slot right here perfectly. So aside from that, it was a pretty straightforward, easy build. This thing's nice and stable and the two, tune that Troncat has and his rates, I already flew it through the house as you'll see at the very end and having never really flown through a house before with this, it was super smooth, stable and fun. Hey everybody, today I'm building my very first two and a half inch Cinewhoop from scratch. So this is gonna be my build log. This is gonna be high def with an air unit and it's gonna be 6S. We're using the Pavo 25 build frame here and I'm calling it the Troncat edition. If you don't follow Troncat FPV, this is everything that I bought down to the T was from his build video. He does a bunch of real estate FPV videos and some other things like that. And I said, why not? I'm gonna follow along and I'm gonna try and replicate that build as best as possible. So we're gonna do a quick inventory of everything I have before we get started with the build. I'll put all the links to everything below if you wanna check them out and see whatever, but I'm super excited for this thing right here, which I'm gonna show you. It's gonna help me with my soldering big time. And then I will do a flight at the very end of the video. I don't have a naked GoPro or any other small light camera for this right now. So it's just gonna be a goggle recording view. And if I have a good experience with gyro flow, maybe it'll even be stabilized. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the Beta FPV Pablo series frames. I also got myself one of these crafty little silicone mats because I wanna be part of the cool club. But on the inside here, we've got all of our different bits and pieces. Um, he also has some downloads for like an extra camera mount to prevent, you know, the jello and stuff that happens. Like I said, I don't have a camera yet. So we've got our frame in here. Um, then we got these parts right here, the ducks, which are all one piece, which is nice and the selling point for him. And I like that as well. So we've only got six screws total in order to have access to the internals here. Um, so some little red or black foam bumpers. This bag right here has an LED for the rear most likely. And then we have our uh, USB port right here with a right angle turn on it. All of our different nuts, screws, and bolts. And then we've got our battery straps and some 3D printed parts. Now we got the flight controller and ESC. So I went with an all-in-one. So we have the Blitz F755 amp, which he recommended. Like I said, everything's in there. So we've got all this stuff right here. Got this nice little board here. Yeah, everything's there nice and complete. And then we've got all our bits and pieces inside, right? We're gonna have our uh, XT60 connector, yeah, capacitor, um, and some hardware for that as well. So for the camera and air unit, he recommended the Runcam Falcon, which costs just a little bit more. But here's something that's gonna be interesting about this, okay, in one second. So let me show you. I mean, I don't really know. Yeah, it looks like an air unit. It looks like the same thing I have on my ProTech 25 and my Nazgul. And obviously it's a smaller camera for a Cinewhoop. But doubling back to the Pavo 25 frame, right? This air unit needs a little bit of a heat sink to separate it from the bottom. So if you go to the um, Beta FPV site, 
You could buy this individually along with the frame, but I ordered everything off of Amazon and it came with this for slightly less, I believe. So I don't know if they're trying to push Amazon and I know some of you are gonna be hardcore and be like, you gotta buy from the local vendors, which I don't disagree with, but one of the reasons why I bought everything off of Amazon is because I have an Amazon credit card and I could finance all of this interest-free for six months. That makes it easier for me to get what I want, which is a drone right now, instead of trying to save up for it. So at any rate, so I bought this off of Amazon. I bought the Beta FPV Pablo 25 frame kit off of Amazon and it included the heat sink and I didn't have to order it separately. So just a heads up, maybe that'll work out for you. I don't know what. For props, he recommended the Gym Fams. These are D63 five blade props. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it's whatever. I'll take them. Sure, why not? And then we got the motors, HGLRCs. Okay, these are a 13303.5, 2500 KV, so a lower KV because it's 6S. These were out of stock when I tried to find them online, so I ordered them directly from them. It took about two and a half, three weeks to get shipped, and they are so small and cute. Look at these teeny things, obviously, I've opened it. I mean, compared to, like I said, my Nazgul, the Protec 35, man, this motor is like itty bitty. It's the size of my thumb, um, super small, but you know, it is what it is. I'm going to follow his build to the T and see how it looks. I do kind of like these containers because, you know, if you happen to live in a uh, legalized state, this seems like a great little container that you can save and reuse for other things, if you know what I mean. Hint, hint, cough, cough. And not build specific, but I did order one of these flux pens. I always see him using them. I always solder without flux because I'm just lazy and kind of new. So hopefully this will make that process a little bit easier. And for the receiver, we're doing ELRS. I recently switched over to the Radio Master Zoro from the DJI controller. And if you buy the starter kit from them, you'll get three receivers, two of them with the kind of like a mortal T looking thing right here. And then you get one ceramic receiver. So I put the ceramic one in the Protec 35. I put one of these in my Nazgul already, and this one's gonna be perfect. Um, definitely these are gonna be good. I, I do wanna do some real estate or try to fly through homes and buildings and stuff. So I definitely want that strong uh, connection. This is only 2.4 gigahertz, but um, it should be good enough from what he says. So we're just gonna rock with it for now. And now it's time for the secret product. What is it? So this is the mystery item that I'm super excited about. I'm sure they look stupid right now, but they are very, very useful. They are magnifying glasses. They're a visor right here. So I have a product unboxing business and I got these from one of my customers. And as soon as I opened it, I was like, why didn't I think about this sooner? And now I get to use it for this first build. So they do come, they're actually really cheap too. Uh, they come with a bunch of different lenses. You can go from one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three and a half time magnification. Obviously you can use it for a wide variety of different things, not just soldering. But for me, no more using the little helper hands with the one magnifying glass that can never be in the perfect area. Plus it's got a little LED on top as well. So you can turn it, you can shine it. I know this is gonna be awesome. So step one, we're gonna put some 3D printed parts onto the main top plate here. The nice thing about this is you can't really mess up which way it goes. So you notice if you flip it around and you get it backwards that the holes actually don't line up. So that's really good for me, especially being my first time, not messing it up and like getting it pointed the wrong way. Then we have a little rubber pad up top here. So that's gonna signify that that goes up instead of to the inside. And this big open gap area right here, it's gonna be for the camera. And then the backside is gonna have the uh, receiver heading out the back. So let's put some of those pieces together. So we'll start with the camera shroud and the GoPro holder. I'm gonna use all these cool little pockets here that come with my little mat. So we're gonna use four of these small ones right here and you'll be able to slide this piece in here, just like so. Then you'll be able to insert the screws from the bottom. And there we go, now we're done. And you can always verify on the top that everything is tightened down just enough, not too much. None of the uh, screws are poking out. Next are these little two pieces that are connected. These are for the battery strap. So you're just gonna snap and cut this out of the way. And actually there's a piece that kicks out to the side that protects one of the screws. So it looks like these are gonna be facing towards the front of the drone. And they go right here over these two parts. All right, so far so good on this. As far as this piece right here that's gonna hold the antenna, that's gonna slide into the back here eventually. I don't know if I need to do it now or later. And then the same thing with the LED. It's got kind of a translucent piece right here. This will press right into it. It's almost like playing with, feels like I'm playing with Legos right now. <laughs> 
And then this piece will come in, this will actually slide in here internally like this and you'll have it plugged into the wire. So that'll hold the LED right here. Now you put this piece on top right here, that's gonna hold your uh, antenna, right? And everything's gonna come in. So we might be a little ahead of ourselves. So let's get to the next step. Next are the motors. This is obviously the top of the drone and this is a pusher where the motors are gonna be underneath here. So we just need to take these, secure these on, right? Make sure that the wires are gonna run down the arm towards the center. And there are two screw sizes with the shorter being the recommended screw to use. So let's do that. So number one is done. Let's do that three more times. So we got all the motors done. Next step is we're gonna be moving over to the flight controller here. We gotta put the little black grommets in those. Those are a pain in the ass sometimes, uh, but that's the next step. So if you look closely at the grommet, you notice that both sides aren't equal. One is thinner or thicker than the other. So when you put it into the board based on what I'm looking at in his, the bottom side gets the thinner one and the top side gets the thicker one. That makes sense because right, you've got this thick JST up here and you got your USB, but just in case you're wondering, right? And then the top of the board also has the arrow if you've never seen it, okay, right up in here, the arrow, this will be the front of the quad when we put this in as well. So FYI. So it's time to solder on some power leads. He uses an XT30 on his build. I'm gonna use the 60 because I'm just gonna assume that most likely Likely my battery is gonna come with that and everything has XT60s. Uh, for his, he takes the capacitor and wires it up directly at the very end. So I'm not sure how he does it if he just comes around the corner like this, uh, but that's what I'm gonna try. So I pulled off the covering. Uh, I'm gonna just put this right here, pull these leads around the corner, wire it in there, and hopefully that'll be good, and then put a piece of uh, heat shrink over the very end. All right, so here's what we got. Check out my handy work. I guess that's what he was meaning. Um, you know, so if you look at it, there's not a whole lot of like lead on these. So even if I did it right here, I guess I could strip the wire back a little bit more, but for the shorter side, the, uh, the negative side, so to speak, right? it would have been a tight fit. So um, I'll probably fill it in with just a little bit of uh, hot glue and then obviously put a heat shrink up here and then put everything together just in case, but it's in there nice and solid for now. So positive, negative, we're gonna wire this up to the top side of the board, 10 these wires, and that's the next step. So we got that taken care of, not bad, not epic here. So we're gonna do a few more things. Um, so this is gonna be the top or the part that is underneath this part of the plate as we go underneath it. So we're going to flip this over and this is where the motor wires are gonna connect. So I'm gonna tin up all of these. And then we're also gonna add on the LED and all the other stuff here now so that it's just already done. All right, so these are all tinned up. Now we're gonna wire up the LED. So the bottom long pad, so use like two small ones right here that are left and right. The bottom one is five volt. The top long one is a ground, and then coming around the corner, the first one is LED. You can't see it because it's hidden underneath the little grommet, but if you pull it back, it says LED there. And then I think this corner one is a T3 and then R3 because their the letters are hidden right there as well. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what we're doing next. Okay, we got that squared away. The ground was giving me some issues, but it's on there nice and secure. So now we can start to add this to the uh, top plate and then start to do the motor wires. Okay, so we're gonna take these screws that come with the kit over here with the flight controller. They're gonna go through these four mount holes right here, right? It's gonna come through and then up and then you get to put one of these little clear nuts on top that'll prevent it from falling back out. And then we can slide that right on top. And actually these two holes are hidden below the battery strap here. So in retrospect, I guess I would wait to put these on until I put on the flight controller. That's okay, we'll just loosen up one screw each so we can swivel it out of the way to put the bolts through. Now we have access to those other two holes. So let's not forget about the receiver, right? I said ELRS and I got this from Radio Master themselves. This might be like a happy model or something. But anyways, we got the RX, TX uh, voltage and then ground and then RX and TX swap on the flip side once they get over here to the flight controller. So I think I'm probably gonna use the ones up on the corner here. Um, I reviewed the wiring diagram. So the first one at the top of the corner is the R and then the T is in the middle. So T goes to R. R goes to T, vice versa. And then I could put the uh, voltage and power or the ground right here on these two pads as well. 
And because the receiver comes with two different lengths of the antenna, I don't know which one I'm gonna wanna use. I feel like the small one, the short one might be too short, leaving the, uh, the module right there. So I'm probably gonna have to go with the long one, which is gonna give me more space, but it's gonna push it up into the front. I wish there was something in the middle, but I got what I got. So what I'll probably do is just leave a little, a few inches of wire so that I can kind of stuff it out of the way perfectly, but not too short, not too long. I'd rather have more than enough than not enough. Um, so let's get that wired up. All right, so I'm probably gonna give it about two inches of extra space. I mean, obviously there's nowhere to go inside of here and it wouldn't be all the way to the back. Um, so it's probably more than enough space to get around things and not have too much extra excess inside. Since this is R at the top, the T from the receiver is going to go there and the T over here is the white. So it's going to be white, yellow, black, and red. And I'm going to use the cool LED on my magnifying glasses so I can see better. RX from the receiver to the TX. All right, so we got that done. Majority's in pretty good shape. Last thing we got to do is wire up the uh, air unit, and then we can start assembling and putting everything together and then soldering the motors onto the flight controller. So we got the air unit wired up, red to red, black to black. White wire is going to go to RX. Gray wire goes to TX, and then correspondingly, they're gonna flip as they go into the controller, but we're good to go with this, and now we can kind of start to assemble everything. So we're gonna put the flight controller on now. Just remember that there is a little arrow. I don't know if you can see it here, but that's gonna be the front of the quad. So not only do we need to flip this over, but this is gonna be the front here. So I'm going to put this on like so, and then we gotta work on where we're gonna route the receiver, right? The LED light needs to come towards the back. We're gonna fish this up and under and through, so that's what we're doing right now. So now we need to do the air unit and the heat sink spacer piece here. There's a couple things you can see. There's like a flat side and then there's like a notched side here. So what he does is he mounts the flat side to the Vista itself so that there's space between the Vista and the flight controller itself. But you're gonna want to make sure you put on the antenna first, this one right here, because once you place this on, you're not gonna have access to put the antenna on afterwards. So now we're gonna put the antenna on, you're gonna put this on top, okay? And you'll see that um, this little plus sign is kind of like blocking the USB port. Hopefully we'll still access, I assume so. And then you take the longer screws that are up here, goes through the bottom and that's gonna hold it down. So step one, video antenna is installed. Now we can take this piece, we'll stick that flat on top, grab one of your mini screws, that is the perfect length. I'm telling you, it's my first time like, all these different screws. Maybe I should have wrote down notes or something like that, but hey, you live and you learn, right? Perfect. Four more screws to go. So this looks great. Everything's on here perfect. All the bolts are the perfect length, right? There's no extra protrusions or anything that could go into the flight controller accidentally or break a chip or something like that. And so the port is up here on this side, as you see. So I could take this, plug this in, and then we're gonna figure out which way we actually wanna rotate this uh, once we put all the pieces together. So this would be a good visualization. The flight controller underneath is like a diamond, like so. Right, the air unit on top is really more of a square shape here. We got the camera perfectly facing forward, the antenna coming back for the, uh, the video feed, and then the wire is going underneath in between the two and then hooks over here to the side. And then for the LED, I haven't quite decided yet, maybe that'll pass through as well as it heads back here. Right, so we've got all the motors soldered onto the flight controller. This is actually the least painful part of this and they're all super solid and look beautiful, if I may say so myself as a non-professional solderer. So now we can start putting the air unit on top, locking things down, and then kind of wrapping up here. All right, so I think we're overall in pretty good shape. I have this attached now just loosely just to make sure everything's lining up and looking good, which it seems to be. And uh, all I gotta do is just secure the camera now right here into this housing. And then um, we can kind of patch everything up and then get to tuning. Okay, so we are very loosely put together, but it all fits. Uh, I've never built anything obviously from scratch, nor this small. So we are definitely tight on space. Um, it fits in here real snug. There's no room to run any wires underneath the air unit. Uh, it's all gotta go through it. Um, so we're gonna see if the receiver is gonna be in the appropriate place. Remember, I used the long one. Now it's kind of sandwiched up in the front, going up and over. Um, so we're gonna get to tuning 
Uh, tomorrow, today I'm done building, but I mean, it barely fits in here. <laughs> it's a tight fit, like I said. Um, so I'll probably have more feedback on what's about to happen after I get to the next parts of this build, like tuning it, testing it, and seeing how everything flows. All right, so we're done building. We're basically ready to get to tuning. I did make a couple of changes since the last clip, so I wanna share those with you now because that might help you out here. So first change that I did is instead of mounting the little spacer uh, piece that goes in between on the top, if you wanna call this the top, I actually put it on the bottom because I didn't like how it was blocking the USB port and it's gonna make it hard to uh, sync up to you know update the Vista and all of that kind of stuff. So I don't know if that matters yet, but I don't think it does. So that's good, that makes it easier to have access to the USB port while you're using it. Um, I did uh, use the shorter uh, antenna here for the LRS. At first I had it towards the front and then was running it through, but it was just too compact and there is just not enough space to the front or back. So the short one is perfect length and then I just ran the wires from the uh, front of the Vista underneath and then to the back and it actually tucks in there perfectly. Um, I also had to swap out the wires that I had originally used because they were crappy. So I used some of the leftover silicone ones that came with the Vista that weren't going to be used. Um, and let's see what else. I think that's about it. So everything just running through and underneath, it's perfect. I feel like the cable for the camera is a little bit too long, but I just kind of wound it up carefully and that's going to tuck into the front. Um, and otherwise, everything else uh, is ready to rock. So I'm gonna link you to uh, his video, the part where he gets into tuning with Betaflight. I've already done that because I got uh, impatient. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's tuned, it's ready. All I gotta do is put on the props and hopefully all the motors are spinning in the right direction as I selected them. And uh, then we're gonna take it for a flight. So the Betaflight, uh, you know, flashing the BlueJ firmware, super easy, uh, doing the Betaflight configurations, using the presets and then putting his um, rate profiles in, super easy and straightforward. So so now I'm just gonna put this thing together. I'm gonna show you what it looks like all done. And then um, we'll get to some flight footage.